how to make phase diagrams. An emulsion is a dispersion of droplets of one liquid within another immiscible liquid, that is, oil and water, which results in a more or less stable system depending on the surrounding conditions. Prevention of drop coalescence is provided by the presence of a surfactant which reduces surface tension. The emulsion has a white appearance. When the droplet size is smaller than 200 nanometer, the system is described as a microemulsion or a nanoemulsion. These emulsions can be achieved by the addition of a co-surfactant. These systems are transparent and thermodynamically stable. The formulation of an emulsion, a microemulsion or a nanoemulsion requires at least three to four different ingredients including an oily phase, an aqueous phase, a surfactant, and a co-surfactant. A phase diagram is necessary to determine the optimum ratio between the various components. This diagram will determine the different phases that are created when these excipients are combined in different ratios. The four variables, water, oil, surfactant, and co-surfactant, create a three-dimensional diagram that is complicated to work with. Therefore, pseudo-ternary diagrams have been established by determining a fixed ratio between two of the variables, often the surfactant and co-surfactant, which reduces the system from four to three variables. Pseudo-ternary diagrams are developed under fixed temperature. For example, when using liquid excipients, experimental conditions are 25 degrees or 37 degrees Celsius. Semi-solid excipients need to be melted for the development of the phase diagram. Therefore, in the case of Gatfosse semi-solid excipients, pseudo-ternary diagrams are developed at 45 degrees Celsius. The principle of the phase diagram is to plot the different emulsion and microemulsion zones that can be obtained by combining different quantities of the components, the oil, water, surfactant, co-surfactant. This is achieved by starting with an initial formulation called X, which is a mixture of oil and surfactant, co-surfactant, which is then slowly titrated with water. The titration results in the appearance of emulsion and microemulsion phases which are visually assessed by turbidity transparency. These results are then recorded and plotted on the diagram. Before showing how these experiments are conducted, here are a few reminders about how to read these pseudo-ternary diagrams. The amount or percentage of component A in the formulation can range from zero, which starts on the base of the triangle, to 100 at vertex A. The grid lines each represent a 10% increase in the amount of the relative component. The percentage of component B ranges from zero, when the starting point is on the right-hand side of the triangle, to 100 when at the vertex B. The percentage of component C ranges from 0 when the starting point is on the left-hand side of the triangle to 100 when at the vertex C. Remember that the three components must total 100%. The starting formulation X is prepared by mixing A, which is the surfactant, co-surfactant, with B, the oil. Then formulation X is increasingly diluted with C, the water. The objective is to record the position of the appearance of turbid, opaque and transparent phases which correspond to the generation of emulsion and microemulsion phases during the course of dilution. The results are then plotted as positions on the grid lines. See positions 1, 2 and 3. The following video demonstrates how to develop such a diagram in the laboratory. 
In general, the starting formula, called X, has a transparent appearance due to the miscibility of the excipients in the absence of water. Before starting the titration, the formula needs to be weighed, placed in a beaker and homogenized. Then water is added drop by drop continuously until the appearance of the mixture changes from clear to turbid or opaque, signalling an emulsion phase. The titration is stopped and the formula is weighed in order to determine how much water has been added. The amount of water is recorded. The titration is then continued, drop by drop, until the appearance changes again. formula becomes transparent, which means it has entered a micro-emulsion phase. At this point, the amount of water is calculated again by weighing the formula and the amount of water added is recorded. This procedure is repeated until the formula is diluted to a volume of water equivalent to one litre in total. Therefore, during the course of the experiment, it is necessary to use a larger beaker. when the formula is one litre in volume. The various phases obtained during the titration are then plotted onto the grid lines of the diagram. To use a pseudo-ternary diagram as a tool to determine the optimum quantities of excipients in a formulation, titration must be performed using several formulas containing different quantities of excipients at the start, x1, x2, x3, and so on. The results of these experiments are then plotted onto the diagram, resulting in a map of the emulsion and microemulsion zones. Some formulas may only yield one type of phase, which does not change during titration. These formulas begin as transparent and remain transparent during the dilution with water, meaning that the combination of oil and surfactant co surfactant produces a microemulsion phase, whatever the quantity of water. Again, the results of this titration are plotted onto the diagram. Finally, Phase diagrams are used to identify the quantity of excipients needed to formulate for oral and dermal drug delivery. When a self-emulsifying lipidic formulation is intended for oral drug delivery, the aim is to identify a formulation that does not contain water but has the capacity to create an emulsion or a microemulsion in a large volume of water corresponding to in vivo conditions in the gut lumen. Once the diagram is completed, it is easy to select different formulations X that are SEDS or SMEDS. For dermal drug delivery, the selection of a formulation is identified directly in the specific emulsion or microemulsion zone.